come and work with me? Well, let me bring you to the work site. This is the beginning. This is what it looks like. We're dealing with nine foot walls here. And as many of you know, when you're dealing with a highly pigmented wall covering, I like to paint behind the scenes. That's not a concession for mediocrity. It's a recognition of the reality that when you have a hairline fracture, and I'm talking hairline, between two sheets of wall covering, if the wall behind the seam is not the color of the wall covering, you're leaving yourself open to leaving a customer dissatisfied with your work. Let's hang the first sheet. When you're joining these geometric patterns, it's important to take into account that the ceiling is a little off. Even if it's only off by a quarter of an inch because of the texture disproportionately applied, you're still off. And so you'll see at the top here, please make sure that they can see this. You can see that I did not end the wall covering where this square ends. I brought it down, and the reason is this. The ceiling is not perfectly straight. If I were to say, well, let's start where this square begins. Guess what? As, as I go around the room, some of that square will be eaten up if I keep my sheets plumb and level. So it would be better if some of the of what's above the square gets eaten up by an unlevel ceiling rather than your square. Would you agree? It's less noticeable if some of this extra gets cut off than the meat of your pattern. Okay, with that in mind, let's hang on second sheet. What makes this difficult is that it's about 80 degrees in the room where I'm hanging this. That's what makes it hard. And whenever I have a corner, I'm going from my established seam into the corner. And since the wall covering needs to give to the seam that's already established, we need to keep this off of the wall so that my wall covering here doesn't get stuck. So all I'm doing here is getting this wall covering into a very crooked corner. And water is your best friend in this case because it helps the wallpaper slide. Put a little water on it so it slides. I love when I see YouTube commercials for a particular wallpaper company. They have somebody smiling, big smile on their face while they're hanging paper. You gotta laugh. Now you see, I'm, 
I'm I'm protecting my established. This is this is my established scene. This must stay. And then I can go to the corner, and then I can go here. But I must hold this down, and that's why I use my fingers. Look, I walk the paper over and get it into that corner. Now, you can't treat this wallpaper like you would anyone else. Because it's very dark blue. What do I mean by that? If you think you can take your smoother and push this corner in and slide that smoother up and down in this corner, you would be making a major mistake. Because even though this is quality stuff, don't trust that the color will stay. right into that corner. I always like to lubricate my tools so that even doing this I don't scratch the surface. Because you can. You can scratch it. And you don't want to do that. The general rule of wallpaper hanging is not to cut your corners. Why put a separation in a pattern, especially a geometric pattern where so many of these lines are meeting in the corner? But I come off my corner and I'm not straight. This is with the corner perfectly filled with the wall covering and this is what I get. Now, I'm still within the two lines. My bubble is, it's, it's in between the two lines, but it's favoring the right side because that's the danger in cutting the corner when you have so many connecting lines. Now, before I hung this in the corner, I put a layer of glue right in the corner, a special thickness of glue because when the paper dries and the water and glue behind it, there's slight movement in the wallpaper. And it's called shrinkage. A note to new wallpaper hangers, or for anybody who has never hung a geometric pattern. They're quite popular today, so if you're a wallpaper hanger, you've probably hung this pattern before. But if you're new to it and you're tasked with hanging this particular paper, a geometric pattern, and you have significantly crooked corners, here's what you do. Take a steel square and measure up your corners in front of your customer and let the customer know this pattern is not ideal to be hung in this particular situation. If your corners are significantly off, it means that I'm going to have to cut the corners in order for the wallpaper not to buckle. If I cut the corners, your pattern is not going to meet. Some customers will say, do it. And others will say, thank you very much for letting me know. Let me get a different wall covering. I give you this advice because this has happened to me. Don't cut your corners on this type of material because I look at it like this. If you're a wallpaper hanger, you always want to hit a home run. Don't hang anything that's going to make your work look badly. If somebody wants this hung in corners that are 
significantly off plum, then my suggestion is you have them get somebody else to hang it because this is a reflection on your name and I suggest that you don't do it. This is how I operate. Okay, we are working against time and of course time is of the essence when you do something like this. So let's just recap. We left the corner because all of our corners are significantly in a state of lack of plumb, serious lack of plumb. And so if I end my wall covering here, which is six to eight inches from the corner, I'm, it's not matching up. I aborted my initial plan, I would bring my edge near the corner in order that I can simply push this into the corner. And it has a very interesting effect. It forces this one inch piece to join this very, very nicely, believe it or not. See, when I push it from here, it joins over in the seam. Let me show you with this. It actually forces it to join. This is not an easy method. But the reason why we're having a difficult time is because of two things. It's a geometric pattern and the corners are off plumb. The third obstacle is this. I don't want to cut my corners. Of course I can tell them I have to cut them. But you know how that's going to look? None of these lines are going to meet up. Not one of them. And it's very unprofessional. Obviously, the choice of wall covering is not the best for this type of situation. However, you just let your customer know, look, your corners are way off. And so we have an additional obstacle here, that's all. But it can be done with lots of patience and a little experience.